Hi, I'm Michael from Planet Naturopath. And I've had a few questions about the self-decode test, what the reports actually look like and what the overall platform looks like. So let's go through and I'll show you uh, my genetic data, let you in on the, uh, my deep dark secrets. So let's uh, let me make this a bit smaller and I'll move me to the side. So, the, so I have a, uh, what's called the professional platform. So I use this for clients. I can upload anyone's test results. So if, if you're just buying a personal plan, whether it's a yearly plan or the lifetime plan, which runs out this week, you, you'll get the, uh, for the personal plan, you get the overview, you get your DNA, health reports, traits, the blogs, you can input your lab results, keep track of them, and you'll get access to personalized supplements too, depending on where you live. So this is the overview and it'll just show you, you know, some of the genetic risks, um, you know, any labs that are not optimal show up here and then they'll have some suggested recommendations and things like that. And some of these, some of these can be, you know, exercise. I think everyone should exercise, avoid smoking cigarettes. That's, you know, pretty much all these, are, um, but there's going to be some more, um, based on the genetics and your labs, there could be more personalized ones. So the next page, this is the health report. And I've actually just opened this up. So some are regenerating. So as new information comes through, uh, more and more reports will just, just get updated. And often they're just slightly updated. And if you're looking through your results for the first time, don't freak out if you're looking at everything with a, a sad face. They always put the bad ones at the top. And yeah, so things like um, you know, H. pylori I've had, hopefully not gallstones, eczema I had in my days many years ago as a chef. So I'm definitely prone to that. I have a family history of heart disease. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm a heavy sweater, I definitely get warm at night. So I've got a special gravity blanket to help with that. Yeah, I'm sensitive to gluten. We can go through more of these. I love caffeine, but it doesn't always love me. And then as you go through, there'll be less, um, you know, the maybe, maybe not type of ones. And just because you maybe have a sad face here, it doesn't mean it's going to be a factor. There's plenty of diet, lifestyle, things you can do to minimize the risk. and um, yeah, I'm not going to, you can just, these reports are generating right now. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to click onto every report. It would take forever. As you can see, there's lots of different reports. And as we go down, hopefully we'll get to some smiley face ones. Um, and, but yeah, I haven't, never, I haven't actually counted them up because I keep adding them, but there's hundreds of reports. As we get down, then you'll have, we'll have a look at some, some reports like the MTHFR and APOE. A lot of people want to know that their status, uh, sometimes it's important. Sometimes it's not, um, then we start getting some smiley faces. So less likely shoulder and neck pain. Uh, but I have a, currently I have a shoulder problem. So that's just because you genetics, uh, you're going to get something. It doesn't mean you will get it. And just because, you know, there's plenty of reasons like posture, lifestyle, um, you know, just playing way too much tennis is why I might get a shoulder issue in, during the summertime. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's basically all the different reports. And then we'll have, um, oh, you can click onto each individual report here. So this is the APOE one. Um, so I have a, a copy of the APOE4 gene and APOE3. So that increases risk of things like Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular disease. Uh, and you can click on this and it'll give you even more detail. And some people say they'd rather not know. I'd rather know if I've got a risk of Alzheimer's because I can be proactive and do diet and lifestyle things to minimize those risks. And, and that's something since I found this out a while back that I've you know started implementing. And then a lot of people, you know, one of the things they tell me is I have the MTHFR gene. Well, uh, 
So do I, and so do 88% of other people have some type of degree of a MTHFR mutation. So if someone's homozygous, it may be an issue, but you can be certainly be in fantastic health and with the MTHFR gene. It's just one piece of an important jigsaw puzzle when it comes to methylation. There's many other genes associated with that. And you can click on these and go into more detail. And, you know, it'll show up some of the other genes associated with methylation relating to this as well. Um, so yeah, you can, you can go down a rabbit hole if you want to go really deep into this. Uh, I have a family history of heart disease. Once again, I'd rather be proactive and make sure, you know, lipoprotein A, homocysteine, ApoB, all my numbers are optimal to prevent heart disease. H. pylori, and you can look at, you can look at the different genes that, you know, you know where they come from, where, where they come up with these um, impacts. So, So with the traits now, similar to the, uh, this is a little bit different. So this is sort of like, you know, uh, my typical greater muscle mass and, you know, the answer is, you know, <laughs> no, doesn't mean I shouldn't do strength training. It's a waste of time. In fact, I probably need to do, you know, that's why I actually focus more on strength training because um, it's one of my weaknesses and having good strength and muscle mass as you get older is really important. Um, and that's, you know, rotator cuff injury. That's partly what I'm experiencing at the moment. Um, and, you know, I definitely agree with this. I'm, I can talk one-on-one -on -one to the camera. I can talk one-on-one -on -one to people. I'm not great in crowds, parties, etc. cetera. Um, what else is interesting? I definitely love cilantro. Some people have a gene for not liking cilantro and yeah, so you can look into, there's a whole range of these. And then there is the blog posts. So you can look at different blog posts. And for example, let's look at, um, you know, maybe gut health. That's something that I'm always sort of, you know, trying to optimize. And there's a whole range of different genes and how they affect gut health. Um, so you can click on this and it'll give you a, you know, an article about this gene, but rather than just a random article that's sort of general to everyone, in the middle, it'll tell us, you know, do you have this gene and how does it impact you? So, you know, you can, you can personalize and then it'll give the treatment plans. So if you don't have that gene, you don't have to worry about, you know, um, optimizing this. So it can make more, it can make things more specific to you. And then this is one of my favorite parts of the reports, actually, you can get super detailed lab tests. And so you just upload all your lab test results, click generate report, and then it will, you can put as much about, you know, the reports as you like, um, simple recommendations, might unclick that, it'll just make it such a long report. And then generate the PDF and usually takes like half a minute and you'll get, you know, you, you'll transport a, you know, five or six page lab report into a 80 or 90 page PDF with detailed uh, analysis of your results. So while that's generating, let's look at this next one. I've never used their custom supplements, but it'll just sort of, based on your lab results, your genetics, it'll come up with, um, you know, recommendations for supplements. But, you know, if you don't have eczema, for example, like I don't have eczema now, so you don't have to, you may not worry about this. Probably working with a practitioner is a better way of optimizing what you might need. So the PDF is generated. Uh, let's download it. Um, and then we open that up. It'll give you this super detail, once again, at these parts here. These are all my labs, but then it'll tell you, so if you're tracking this over time, it'll uh, give you all the different ones. It'll give you detailed about, you know, each, each marker. And so you can go through and tell you, you know, if they're out of range, how to improve them, what's going on. 
So this is a great way of not just keeping track of your blood test results, but learning more about the labs and not just looking at, and once again, the, the reference ranges here. So the optimal range for TSH, for example, is between one and 2.5. The reference range for a typical lab is between 0.4 and 4.5. So someone could be three or four and the doctor will say, yep, everything's fine, but your levels are not optimal. So you wanna make sure that everything's optimal. So, Hopefully that helps as an overview of the self-decode genetic platform.